to go downtown. Downtown, hey! Downtown. You're about to go downtown. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, and welcome to another week's episode of Downtown World with your girl Kay. Don't waste no time with negativity. Now, I'm truly excited um, to have you guys meet Natasha Renee today and this relationship for me has formulated off of the strength of like the beauty of networking. Um, We both equally were at an event that, you know, we weren't too privy to like how to maneuver, how to do things, but I'm really happy we were able to connect. And she is a black queen out here doing the work. She works at Forbes for the culture. She does serial entrepreneurship for herself and her own independent businesses. And I will let, Natasha, explain a bit more when she can get into support your girlfriends and all the beautiful work that she's a part of. So, hi, Natasha. (laughs) Hi, Kay. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing today? I'm I'm good. How are you? (laughs) (laughs) Try my best not to waste any time with negativity. (laughs) It's it's a positive. We have to think about everything that's positive, regardless of what negativity is going on around us. Literally, literally. So I want to just start off right from the top with you. Like it's a whole panini, something none of us in the world have ever experienced before. Hence why I was able to even like connect with you because had they have had um, an in-person summit, probably I wouldn't have been able to make it. But as we can see, businesses have been forced to curate and navigate around the new world. So how have you been doing with all of this health-wise, family-wise, friendship-wise, the whole tea? (laughs) I I say, you know, for other people, I haven't lost anyone, you know, thank God for that. But I've thrived during the pandemic. Like for me, it was different because I'm an introvert, because I say to myself, it was easier for me to navigate. Like, especially with my kids, I have two kids that's in boarding school. So for me, them being at home was a great thing because they're always gone. So like I said, everybody, oh my gosh, my kids are at home. We have to do, I'm like, no, my kids are at home. (laughs) This is great. You know, and also, you know, I started my podcast. You mentioned support your girlfriends and Forbes culture and being a member of part of um, Forbes Forbes culture also, I I did all of that in the pandemic because I had time. So the pandemic allowed me to have time to do things that I said I didn't have time to do. Mm. Now, I'm sorry to get so deep so quick, but just that simple phrase alone shows the amount of conditioning that has been done to all of us. I was Mm -hmm. allowed time. Like, Our time is ours. I don't remember ever signing a contract or anything or giving that away to anybody. But yet still, so many of us entrepreneurs, Black women, Black queens can say, I was finally given time, allowed time. Like, ain't nobody, who who are we asking permission? But it, it just shows how much like reconditioning, unconditioning, like stripping away, just all these things that we've had to go through on in every aspect of our life, including parenting. Yes, definitely. Like like you said, uh, allowed and it's our time, but, but we're so used to this is what we do now. We go to our nine to five. After we go there, we go home, we cook, we clean, we study, and then we don't have the time. And I always say as a mother, and I'm learning because Believe it or not, both of my kids are now officially teenagers. Well, my daughter, as of tomorrow or in two days, she'll be a teenager. But I was I was so used to I had to do everything for else that when they did go to boarding school, I had to take a step back because now it was just me. Like, what am I gonna do for me? And I remember the dean of um the uh, housing she had gave me a chicken um, noodle soup for the soul for women and gave me a journal and said you need to figure out what you're going to do with your life right now wow wow yeah. I am not a parent and but I, I sympathize empathize um, and congratulate <laughs> the ones that I do know including you all the time because 
it's not easy. I've worked with kids for over 10 years. I'm able to send them back to their parents, call (laughs) them to come and pick them up when they are just not acting right. But parents, you don't have that luxury. They are stuck, 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 right? So I shouldn't say stuck because it's not like a bad thing. No, you get what I'm saying. (laughs) You get what I'm saying. And I literally just had this conversation with my mother. And I love hearing your perspective as a mother, because of course I was speaking to her as a daughter to her, to a mom. And I was like, listen, I'm your youngest baby. And I just turned 30, like live your life. Like I had to tell her, live your life. I'm like, what is it that you like to do? Yep. Like, what is it? Take out everybody, take out what is something that you've always wanted to do? And like, you know, I was sad that, you know, I brought her to tears, but I knew what I was saying was out of like, just as women, Love. no matter what age yeah. you are and everything that's happening, that empty nesting and all of those things, like you have to find the things and funny, you said chicken um, soup for the soul for women, because she has, I think, every single series of that book that you could have had, like, <laughs> she has in the house. And I'm like, have you ever really taken it and really mm-hmm. read and put those things into practice? So what are one of the things, Natasha, that you could share out there with the moms, future moms, women, to say that's something that you've done for you, had nothing to do with your kids, nothing to do with you know any relationships just the relationship with self um this step um like I said during the pandemic like me starting uh focusing on journalism so one thing I think I mentioned when we were in the networking room yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to call by the bar in the, in the gather in the gather room by the bar right I <laughs> I have over uh, 11 years of purchasing and procurement experience. And because I was a mom, I knew I had to have a job. Mm. I had to have this. I had to feed my kids. I had to do this. So I pushed journalism aside and I stopped writing. Like I wrote a little bit, but I stopped. I completely stopped writing. And I'm like, no, it's not going to pay the bills. Always in my head, mentally, as a mother, I thought my gift is not going to get me where I need to be. But my gift now, within the past year, has gotten me to me 2K, has gotten me in these circle of the support your girlfriends, everything, because I have a gift and I write. Like, I write now, I am a creative writer for now prmagazine.com and I write a monthly series called Case of the X and it's a short story series but they wouldn't have known that if I didn't have the podcast and that was the one thing that's why I always say my podcast is my baby because that was the step that I took out for me yeah 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 I can I can I can visualize like everyone watching this and just like not in agreement like everything you're saying is resonating. And I, and I love that for you. And I, and I pray that for all of us out there, um, no matter what sex, gender you subscribe to, but like, I really wish that all for us, because that's even what this whole community environment that I'm building is mm-hmm. about helping others to win. So let's dig a little bit into that mindset, right? Because I feel like motherhood is one mindset that it's kind of force on you to get it together as much as you can mm-hmm. during the time as you're like incubating the beautiful human that you're making. And then as well, getting in the mindset to get to the stage where you're like, my podcast mm-hmm. is my baby. That shows priority. That shows you knowing what's important to you and what's not important to you, right? So mm-hmm. if you can speak on how you were able to get yourself in a mindset of, efficient entrepreneurship because you have to manage your the time for those you know that are wanting what's efficient entrepreneurship managing that time and it's something we can always learn but what what are some of the ways you getting in that mindset so I'm not dampering the mode but I feel like people need to hear my story all about the real and because of my story and to let people know it's never too late. So I'm 38 and I lost my mother at the age of 16. 
my stepfather, I lost him when he, when I was 13. So I lost both my parents by the age of 16. Uh, my, my real biological dad, I do talk to him, but he's not in my life like he should be. So I moved from one state to another state. And again, me becoming an introvert was because of the fact that I lost my mom. I fell back. I fell completely back. Even when I got to college, I wasn't doing what I needed to do because I didn't know how to handle loss. Even though I smile, like everybody sees me, I smile all the time. And I always tell people, you don't know my story unless you talk to me. Because when they hear it, it's like, oh my gosh. So a couple of years ago, I feel like it's been about five years. My, I'm my mother's only child, but my dad has 10 kids. And one of my brothers died tragically. And it hit home. But it didn't really hit home because I didn't really know him. And I think about three years ago, and I can't believe it's been that long, my sister died right after him tragically. And that's the one that hit because I knew her as a child. I, I was the one who always tried to help her and mold her, do the things for her so she could succeed. And, you know, she got addicted to drugs. She was lost in the streets. And like I said, she passed away tragically. And that's when I thought, like, I have to do what's best for me. I can't continue to try to help other people because I want these relationships with my siblings. I want these relationships with my family. But I'm like, my friends are my family. The people that I meet, you know, and network with, you you build these relationships, you be, build these long going friendships and families. So it's like I have everything that I need in my circle. Now I have to learn how to make myself believe that I have everything. Because again, like I said, mm. I set mm. so much aside that mm. I doubt make myself that, believe. Yep, that I have. I everything. doubt it that. I didn't have it. Like, even when I started writing uh, for Nicole, for her, her website, I was completely scared. Like, I'm like, I haven't written since I was 18, literally. And I'm like, 20 years later, I'm like, I don't think I have it. I don't, I don't think it's there. I'm like, no, it's not going to work. So then she gave me a challenge. She's like, I need you to write something. She gave me a month to write it. And I'm like, okay, let me put this together. I sent it to her. And then she writes me back. I want you to do a monthly series for me on my magazine. And I'm like, do I really have it? So each month, I'm literally, K writing these stories. And I'm like, I do have it. People do like the things that I write. And I'm like, I found my niche. But it took darkness for me to see the light within myself. Mm. Mm. so so many powerful statements with it everything you said and your story is so beautiful and thank you for your courage you know I I feel like never in my life have I seen so many black women in a healthy way share their experiences in efforts to really encourage and help others you know mm -hmm. I feel like before when I would hear a lot of black women stories, it was out of exploration of like pity or like, you know, where there's definitely times where, you know, that's deemed, but I mean, like during the pandemic, just openly seeing, mm -hmm. um, you know, and knowing that we're not alone. No, like we have all this in and then the maze, someone else is just like, yeah, I can relate. This happened to me X, Y, Z. So thank you for your courage. No problem. <laughs> thank you so much for that. And, you know, I hope that everyone can hear what you're sharing and know that there's no age on it. And nope, you may have everything, but it takes the realization. That you have it. You have to believe within yourself. that you The have knowing. It the yep. knowing it's so powerful like people speak about manifestation but it's also the knowing 
It's not like hope yep. and manifestation. It's knowing and manifesting. Because if, if you're not too sure about it, but you're manifesting it, it's already uh, yep. an off an off equation. So, <laughs> right? We just have to be mindful of those things, right? So think when you were creating your podcast, right? How did you come up with the concept of like the name and really like starting <laughs> at like episode one? <laughs> Okay. I'm ready for this story. <laughs> <laughs> so a few a few years back, someone was on uh, Facebook and I can't remember who it was. And she, it was like, if you had to post and, and put together a title of your life, what, what would you name your book? And so everybody's putting names up. And then I just randomly put disaster dating one-on-one on what not to do while dating and so everybody was like oh that's funny whatever and my friends always say I had one friend she will always ask me about my dates and she knew that they were bad so but she will always like it because she thought it was funny she's like I don't know how you meet these men Mm -hmm. so I was like why don't I come up with a book called disaster dating 101 what not to do while dating and I was like, it'll be fiction, but it sounds like a self-help, but it was going to be stories of a woman going through dating and trying to find love. But the issue with the book was I'm single. So I'm like, do I want her to find her Prince Charming, the traditional, oh, she finds love in the end. Or I'm like, do I want her to be single? And that's why I took a pause on it because I'm like, in reality, I'm single. Mm. I haven't found my Prince Charming. And in reality, some people are single and they date. So I'm like, how do I want this book to end? So I put a big pause on it. And like I said, I started doing things for me. So I started working with a videographer and um, starting doing stuff in DC with him. And so I started writing a little bit. So I told him, I was like, hey, let's come up with a podcast. And it would be focused on um, mental health because he's a double amputee. He lost both his legs in a car accident. No, a motorcycle accident. And we both had issues with like dating and dealing with, you know, depression and just mental health. So I was like, let's put it together. Let's put a podcast together and call it Two Dope, Two Dope Guys and a Girl. That was my idea originally. Yeah. And they kind of stalled on it. They they saw long stall on it. And I'm like, okay. And the reason I went to them is because I didn't know how to do audio. And I thought that with a podcast, you had to do audio. So in the back of my head, I had this podcast in, in my head. And I'm listening to The Breakfast Club. And it's a guy talking about um, podcasts and your rights and everything. And literally, Kay, I wrote out 12 episodes right there. Literally. I put who I wanted on there, what I wanted the podcast to be about. And I put all this stuff together. And I had a friend who did a podcast, but he did it by himself. And so I asked him, I'm like, I feel like I have to have a co-host. And he's like, no, if you do a podcast, you just have to know to talk by yourself. And I'm like, I don't want this to be just me. So one of my friends, um, went to college with me shout out to Norfolk State Uh, (laughs) she we went to a Norfolk State event and we saw each other there and we lived right down the uh, street from each other and she was telling me how one of her friends asked her to be on a podcast because she's a psychotherapist Mm -hmm. and I'm like well hey Robin do you think that you can come on a couple of times for my podcast she's like hey I'm down so I have all this stuff on how to do a podcast, but I don't know how to do a podcast. Podcast. So then that goes back to the whole support your girlfriends thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm in these virtual webinars and I meet a woman by the name of Lindsay Christian. And she's hosted for Forbes before. I think she was on NBC. She she does a lot of um, hosting events. And she hosted a a book release. And I was there for that one. And then she hosted another event 
with this group. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's really good. So we ended up in the kind of like us in the networking room together, but it was supposed to be a whole bunch of people, but it was just us. So she's like, hey, you know, what's your name? What do you do? And I told her, you know, what I did, but I said, you know, I was interested in, you know, creating a podcast out of nowhere. Oh, I can help you. What's your email address? Real, real story. <laughs> like, what's your email address? She's like, I will send you the information on how to start a podcast. Just um, go to this um, at the, you know, after the event, look out for an email and then, you know, let me know if it works. Sure yeah. enough, I think like a week later, she sent me the link to Anchor and she's like, it's real simple. Just literally record yeah. and that's it. And I'm like, wow, I don't know this woman, never met her. And I went to another event and it was the Support Your Girlfriends event. And then they, you know, offered the membership. I joined the group and the woman that's over it, Nakia, she is, she does PR. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, she knew Lindsay. And she's like, yes, Lindsay is one of our glossy, glossy posse sisters. So the glossy posse was like, Everyone that can be an influencer as far as uh, personalities that's on TV, women that are over editors and chief of well-known magazines, that's the glossy posse. So come to find out, Lindsay was in the group also. So that's why I said like that big circle in the pandemic yes, of yes. these women that are in t two totally different states. I think Lindsay is further down south and I think Nakia is like a up north in New York somewhere. That is beautiful. And shout yeah. outs to you queens for just like, that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? Being the yeah. student at the right time and being the teacher at the right time. And, yep. you know, I'm learning that uh, the older and more I grow into my womanhood. So if you could speak on a, a staple question that we ask here at Downtown World, right? What is a situation, it doesn't have to be recent, where it was definitely negative, no questions asked, it was a negative situation, but somehow, some way, you found a way, Natasha, not to waste <laughs> any time with negativity. <sighs> I don't want to <laughs> talk about this, but I feel that I should. So with podcasting, and I think, Kay, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because you're a woman also. Okay. I think we, we deal with a lot of we, we can't be ourselves when it comes to sometimes dealing with men. Some men take things totally left <laughs> and they don't understand how to have a working relationship with a woman. And I'll leave it to say it. Insert that Jamaican horn here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I was a guest host on a platform and I was doing it for a while. It was going well, going great. And I didn't see any issues with, you know, with us recording together. I could kind of see the little snippets of the flirtation, but I, I always kept it professional. I even yeah. said like, hey, this is a great thing. I don't want to mess it up. Like, let's keep this professional. And it didn't go left as far as him hitting on me. It went left with, me hanging out we all went out you know to hang out and I started talking to someone at the bar and I guess he felt some type of way and he sent me like this nasty text message like literally saying you're trifling you're this you're that and I'm just like I was hurt and typical Tasha and not Natasha Renee typical Tasha would have sucked it up and continued to work with this person I wouldn't have said anything I would have you know it's like oh well you know because I was that kid that people used to tease so I'm used to the negativity coming on me and just still acting like patterns nothing, yeah. yep nothing happened and it got to me and I'm like, no, I can't, I can't work with someone like this. I can't do this. So I, I snapped, but 
the good in that is I stuck up for myself in that situation. Um, it was it was very uncomfortable. Like I really wasn't going to say anything. It was very uncomfortable situation. But it's like don't allow one person. You know, everyone isn't the same. But then I also learned within that that I have to say when you see the flirtation, when you see the signs, say something then to prevent what happens. So now I'm learning that when I do work with men. I have to say, look, this is a work relationship. This is what it is. We're professionals. Like, even if we have to sign something, I'm willing to sign something. But this is work-based only. 1,000%. And thank you for your vulnerability in sharing that because it's a it's a touchy one. I relate on yeah. it. I relate on <laughs> all sides. I, I, I've gotten beside myself, you know, and gave into the energy when, you know, like we can't smile, we can't do anything because it, it, they're going to take it as, <laughs> oh, she's, she's into me. And it's just like, yeah. oh my gosh, like, this is just my, my personality. Yep. And it's, yep. it's, it's such a game of tennis. It's such a game of tennis. If there's something, well, you did, you did share a key, a key um, advice that I, it's weird for me at what stage to implement it, but that's something I, I definitely also do where you mentioned, you know, you let them know at the beginning, this is strictly professional, you know, yeah. work relationship, no funny business type of situation, you know? Um, and that's unfortunate. And, you know, that just showcases a lot of people's insecurities. And I feel like that's yes. like the root of that. Like, you know, you can't have like a good, smart, educated like women around you, you without having to like claim her as like your property right <sighs> it seems like the running theme in this is like we have to be claiming a lot of things that I don't remember us as women yes <laughs> giving permission to say <laughs> no permission and I give you permission yes yeah 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 that well thank you so um, a staple thing we also say here at downtown world is eat fruit and mind your business. Okay. <laughs> yes. So say that with the most respect, right? It's good for us. It's good for the skin, the yoni, and you be minding your business all at the same damn time. So love it. <laughs> yes. Mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> right. So another staple question that we have is you have the five elements, right? You have air, earth water, fire, and spirit. Which element do you feel like represents or you resonate with the most and why? I would say spirit. Um, because I'm a spiritual person and like literally every morning that I wake up, like let this be a good day. Please allow the people that are around me to be around me. Um, you know, please lead me in the right path. And because of how I, you know, have my affirmations in the morning, sometimes I have the sticky notes to get me through, Mm -hmm. you know, faith is what got me through in life, literally. Yeah. So. Yeah. Speak on like a time when you really had to use (laughs) your faith and it worked out for the better. Um, now, <laughs> um, one thing about me, Kay, I'm very open with my life, literally, because I always feel like there's someone who needs to hear this. So pandemic, like I said, um, my regular nine to five, I, I can tell that, you know, they were getting rid of people and I knew that they were... I knew I was next because I was the last to hire, first to fire. Yeah. And so I'm really like, God, how am I going to like get through this whole thing? Because I'm already, you know, I have my apartment, my kids are here. Like what, what can I do? And then, you know, talking to my son and also like my son convincing me, to go back to school. He's like, hey, I need you to graduate before I graduate. And if it wasn't for my son to even convince me to go back to school, 
I literally would not be in the position, you know, that I took that step. And it's not just about school. It was like literally everything because I did end up losing my job. So, you know, with those steps of me going back to school, it was like, okay, well, let me transition. Let me get closer to my school since I know I have to, you know, go back to school, utilize my financial aid for me to, you know, get somewhere to stay because I knew, you know, with got to pay the money back, but you know, you got to refund and stuff like that. But it positioned me. I I talked to my, um, you know, advisor and I'm like, do I need to physically be near the campus? And she's like, yeah, this semester I have all virtual, but the next semester, you know, I'll set it up so you can transition out here. And literally, if it wasn't for my son to, you know, say this stuff, I wouldn't have had a smooth transition. And then I end up, you know, this May coming up, I graduate. And then in June, my son graduates. So That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What, let me ask you if I'm not being too intrusive, right? Because this is, I've, I'm no stranger to talking about like the relationships um, and the issues that like I face between like my mother and I or my father and mm-hmm. I, you know? So what, because I found that so important. You listen to something your child had to say, because when I think about it, like a child doesn't know nothing. Much of what they know is that mm-hmm. they love you. So yeah. They may not have all the information, but I'm a firm believer in definitely you can learn something from anyone, right? So what is it mm-hmm. about your son saying that to you really gave you that like green light to like be like, you know what? I'm gonna listen to you, son. Like so he he's very quiet. So let me my son is like six two. 220 pounds oh god, oh, god. Not, the ladies are not little, not little, like so you guys can get a visual he's not a little like but he's your baby he's your baby he's my baby <laughs> um he's seen everything that i've been through and he i just found out he speaks so highly of me at school but he's like i've seen you literally go through things that you've gone through he doesn't look at it as failure he looks at it as you know you're taking a a step further to better our lives so any mistakes that I've made he hasn't been the one like oh my gosh do we really have to do this is it I'm Pisces and I feel like even though he's my son he keeps me in place to kind of like ma like really we can't do that <laughs> he's g-checking his mom I love it I love it <laughs> but yeah he's like and he, he told me he's like you know if, if I don't graduate he'll be the first and within our family, family to graduate Actually. college. So that's why he's like, I need oh, you man. to do it so you can be the first. So I can say my mom graduated from college and I'm going to college because my mom showed me. I love it. And I cannot wait yeah. to like celebrate you some more when that time comes. So I will give you a down. ticket. <laughs> yes, everything. Because that is like beautiful. That is like one of like, the biggest conversations I will hear, like, you know, recently with everything and parents, you know, having to reconstruct their lives. We're used to being out there and fluctuating and things, but like our parents' generation having to be like, oh, church virtual, this virtual, that, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And being like, it's okay to go to school. When I was in school, I don't like 60% of the people in my class were not even like straight out of high school. They were like grown people that. Yep. We're taking and we were sitting there like, why are these old people in these classes? (laughs) Well, no, those were actually some of my best classmates and like friends to this day. Yeah, but I know for me, when I would take the night classes, I'm in my like 18, and I'm like, what is this 40 year old man? Now you know in this class. Now I know. Now you know, (laughs) right? Look at life. So, (laughs) one of the other things um, that I truly, truly love in my life. Uh, and I'm working on a better relationship between us is food. Um, (laughs) 
I love me some food and I love to like chef it up at home, especially with like the pandemic and, you know, not wanting to like eat out all the time, all of those things. So when it comes to like food, I want to know, like, what are your eating habits like, especially because you're a mom? I don't know how y'all so do I it. Have horrible, <laughs> have horrible, 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 horrible. And I'm vegetarian and I have horrible eating habits. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What do you what do you consider horrible? Because I hear the word vegan and I'm like, girl, you way better than where I'm at, you know. So So I, I'm more of a I'm I'm pulling away from carbs, but like French fries and French fries are like the devil, but I love them. I, I love eat, some potatoes. I eat potatoes all day, like literally all day. Pasta potatoes, I can eat it all. Um when my kids are home, my son actually likes to cook. But, you know, and I'll take that uh, for that for him. But I'm not, I do not eat meat. But usually my go-to for my kids, they love when I make oxtail. Don't Mm. ask me how. Don't ask me. (laughs) (laughs) So that's usually my go-to when they're home. Cabbage, oxtail, Mm. um, Mm. some rice, you know, Mm. make it Mm. real hearty and heavy. Mm. Uh, yes, if yes. I'm by myself, I usually do like a, I try to stay, even though I have bad eating habits, I do try to stay away from carbs, especially now that we're here and we're not going out. So I substitute rice with the cauliflower rice. Yes, really good. And I usually dice that up with garlic or I'll do a stir fry with it. Yeah. And then the heart of palm, I use that pasta instead of regular pasta. Dope, so dope. I can like indulge without the calories. Thank you. And I th- <laughs> thank you for sharing those little tips because that's something else I've learned. Like, okay, there's different alternatives. Shout out to PR Diva. Um, she's one of my um, big sisters in media, especially here in Canada, but she is like the queen of keto. Like she even has the largest like keto um, club on like clubhouse. And like, she's okay. taught me like, a lot, you know, making lasagna with alternative options where it's tasting just the same. Um, I don't have an air fryer, but she makes like plenty of meals that save you have from to get one. a lot of oil. Oh my gosh, you have to get one. That is like the best thing on earth. I'm like thinking like I'm not ready for space food. That's what I be thinking about the air fryer. I know it sounds so dangerous. Let me tell you, honest. if you are a meat eater, you can marinate, put stick it in there put it in I think like 25 minutes that's the part that I'm like hmm can I take all this microwave food (laughs) and still be good like no but you're right there's a a lot of meals (laughs) she had these barbecue jerk wings that I'm definitely gonna have to get an air fryer to be able to make those so I'm gonna take your advice (laughs) take a chance it's worth it it is worth it is there any food that you notice that when you eat it may like boost your energy because as an entrepreneur I know sometimes our levels can get low like even we were talking prior you know I'm going through my womanly things right now I'm like oh good god I want a burger (laughs) I want this I want that I don't like thinking about what I won't eat so what is something that you use or you would eat or drink as a mood booster when you're feeling like on the go, don't have a lot of time. So I am a, a true coffee drinker. Shout out to Starbucks. If you were not here, I don't know what I would do without you. <laughs> so my boost is a dark roast with <laughs> seven Splenda, <laughs> tall dark roast, seven Splenda and a mossy grain bagel with butter. That is my go-to. Get me the that Natasha Renee, started. please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want cream? No cream. Yeah. And with dark roast, you got to get it at a certain time. So that means I have to get up early enough to get it so it's fresh. So yeah, that is my go-to. A tall dark roast. If I had that, come back, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I love that. I'm a tea drinker myself, but I can see all the coffee drinkers being like, yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> right. I wanted to ask, what what are one of the things that you do in your morning routine that you feel like helps you to have a better day? Um, like I said, pray. 
um, usually pray. If I, if I don't pray in the morning, and so let me explain my prayer. No, I'm not on my knees praying. I'm literally laying down, hitting the snooze praying. Like that's my reason to stay in the bed. It's like, yeah. Lord, get me through this day. And then I hear the alarm. Lord, please, please get me through this day. <laughs> So that is the truth right there. Yes. I, I tell people like praying keeps me in the bed longer, but it it does. I have to like mentally tell myself, like, today is your day. You got it. You got this. Even this morning, I'm like, you got this, no problem, no worries. All right, get up and go. And then I'm like, I have that like when I finally get through it, that want to get up and I'm up and moving around. Exactly. I love it. I love it. And um, I remember a while back, I shared this uh, meme and it was like prayers are part, a part of my boardroom. And like, it's, it's, it's true. Like the more I've learned to let go of self and let God be a part of like what I'm doing, the posts I'm making, the content, you know, we're curating the things that I'll say yes to being a part of. I found like mm-hmm. you spoke on vulnerability earlier and um that's something I'm learning. It's very, it's very important in terms of like working with gratitude and being vulnerable, all those things. So um, definitely, definitely strong words of advice. Right. So Natasha, if there was something that you could tell your younger self, what would one, what would one of those things be? Keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. Yep. I love it. I love it. Keep writing. I need to say that. <laughs> so my keep writing. <laughs> right. What is what is something that you say helps you get out the writer's block funk sometimes? Or what is one of um, those weird writer things to my writers and journalists out there? What is something that you do maybe that audiobooks? We 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 talked about it earlier. Audiobooks. Audiobooks really help me. Um, like I said, with James Patterson. James Patterson is such a tell writer. Um, it's a fiction, you know, he does fiction books. He does the, um, what is it? Uh, Alex Cross series. Okay. So Along Came a Spider and um, what is it? I, I've, I've gone through all the books. So I'm trying to think of the ones that were on TV, the movies, but Kiss the Girls. But okay. the books, um, it's, I don't remember which book it was. And, and by the way, he's a white writer. But if you listen to Alex Cross is a black man. Okay. And it, when you read these series, you really think that the writer is a black writer. Um, it was one, I don't remember which book it was, but I remember him going, he described the college dorm and walking in the dorm. He's like, as I walked in the dorm and these are not his words verbatim, but he's like listening to the, the sounds of arrested development and looking at the wall, looking at the uh, ice cube posters on the wall. And it's like, you I felt like You're I was walking. literally in that room. Yeah. So I use him as my muse. So when I do write, I try to write as detailed as I, I am. And one of my friends, when she started reading my series, Case of the X, the first thing that she said was, I felt like I was that person. I said, I got it. I did it. I achieved what I wanted to achieve, but yet listening to audiobooks that are fiction get me back because I like to hear the detail, not the self-help, the fiction ones work because you want to feel like when you're closing your eyes or when you're listening, you want to feel like you're there. Mm. And so those are the type of books that help because I'm listening, but also listening to the words. And getting the feeling when I do audiobooks versus actually reading the books. Yeah. And I love that too, because as you said that, the thought came to mind like audiobooks is a great, great tool because like you're speaking on um James Patterson with his example and just being like really um descriptive. So if I'm listening to it and I'm not feeling that, then it wasn't written in a way that was mm-hmm. descriptive. So very, 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 thank you for the fruit. You know, <laughs> people say keys, we, we have fruit, right? Over here. Yes. <laughs> so I want you to let everyone know, Natasha, 
where they can support you, where they can find you, follow you. And also we're normalizing here um, how you prefer to be approached. <laughs> I'm so happy you said that. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I do a, I'm so happy you said that. I do a um, weekly live on Facebook and I always say, please do not DM me because I'm going into the DM. DMs or DM right away. <laughs> But the best place to reach me is on Instagram, Natasha Renee underscore the creator. You can send me a message on there. I will respond to the messages on there. Also, my link tree is on there. So once you click the link tree, the chapter series is the first thing that's up there. And then all my podcast information, that's the best place to go is to Natasha Renee underscore the creator. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I want to say thank you so much, Queen, for just sharing your story and being so vulnerable today. And I was truly inspired being like a journalist and I'm definitely in a rut of writing right now. So I really thank you for your words. It spoke to me and I'm hoping you guys at home were blessed by it as well. Um, Natasha Renee, she chose not to waste time with negativity today. She <laughs> ate fruit, minded her business with us. Thank you, Queen. And I really hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day and rest of year. 2022 Thank you so is much right for there. Me. Right there. Literally right there. <laughs> right. About to go downtown.